Hello everyone, this is Dr. Young here, and in this video I'm going to talk about how to calculate atom economy, which is uh, wrapped into this idea of green chemistry and some of these green principles. Now this video is not meant to be an overall introduction to green chemistry or to atom economy examples, but just very specifically on how to do the calculations. You know, if you have an equation, how do you calculate that percentage? How do you calculate that atom economy? What I will say as a reminder here, right, is here's a list of the 12 principles of green chemistry. Um, right from the American Chemical Society and um, the uh, uh, EPA. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but I want to highlight here that number two is atom economy, right? We So remember that green chemistry is all about preventing waste, having less hazardous waste, um, doing safer reactions to protect the workers, trying to use renewables, things that biodegrade, et cetera, et cetera. And atom economy is one of these 12 principles. So let's talk more about how to calculate this atom economy and kind of what is it talking about in general. Um, what you'll see here, right, atom economy, it's just kind of, it's a, it's a metric that we can use when we're trying to discuss how green a reaction is. And it's a way to sort of theoretically measure what percent of the atoms, or at least the mass of those atoms, end up um, in your product, right? So what's the mass of all of the reactants that you're putting into a reaction? And then how much of that ends up in your product, right? Because ideally, you want all of your reactants to end up in your product. You don't want to waste a bunch of stuff, right? Uh, the point is not to have a bunch of extra atoms, extra mass that you're just going to have to throw away. We want to get as much of the reactants into the product as possible. That would be a reaction with a really high atom economy, right? If you were to build a house, the idea is that you want to basically use all of the lumber and sheetrock and everything that you bought. You don't want to have a whole bunch of extra that you're just going to throw away. And that's kind of the idea with this atom economy. And so I can take a look at these two reactions here, right? So um, it doesn't really matter what these reactions are. We don't have to stress about that right now. But what I want you to see here is that for this first one, um, this reaction is really atom economical. And so what I, what I mean by that here is that this is my product. This is my desired product. This is my desired product. And here are my reactants, right? I have this and this. So over here on the left-hand side, I have um, two carbons, I have four hydrogens, and I have two chlorines. And on the right-hand side, in my desired product, I have those same two carbons, I have those same four hydrogens, and I have those same two chlorines. So what's great about this one is that all of the atoms ended up in my product. Right, they all end up in my product. So I'd call this a 100% atom economy because everything from my reactants ended up in my product. Now, if I do the same thing with this one, the second example, um, here's gonna, again going to be my desired product. And here are my reactants. I could do this same sort of thing here. But what we're going to see is that, look, I have a side product here, right? Here's a side product, something that I didn't try to make, but I just made because this, that's how this reaction worked. So I have this side product. And the idea is that this is waste. Right, this is not going to end up in my desired product. I'm going to throw this away eventually. It's going to go down the drain or go into some chemical um, waste disposal place. And uh, what's going to happen here is if I calculate the atom economy for this reaction here, I'm going to see that the atom economy for this reaction ends up being 37%. Well, specifically 37.08% for this one, which is much less, right? What we're saying is that the mass of the atoms that went into this reaction, only 37% of them ended up in my desired product. That most of that mass, right, almost two thirds of that mass ended up in my waste. And that's because, for example, bromine weighs so much. So I, my side product was the majority of my mass that I um, produced, and that's not what I wanted to make. So this would not be a very atom economical reaction, whereas this first one would be a much more atom economical reaction. So you might be asking yourself, well, where did you come up with this 37.08? How did you get there? And that's what we're going to talk about next is how, how did I calculate that? But right now, I just want you to see that in the first example, all of these atoms ended up in the product, which is why it's 100% atom economy. That's exactly what we're going for. That's what you want to see in a perfect world. 
And then in the second example, I made a product, but only 37% of all of this mass that I started with ended up in that product. So that is a less atom economical reaction. Less of my mass ended up in my product. Now, if I take a look at this, right, um, uh, there is an, a, an equation here. So what you have here, atom economy is calculated by taking the molar mass, right, which um, again, molar masses that we're talking about grams per mole, you're just adding up the atomic masses from the periodic table. You're taking the molar mass of your desired product, and you're going to divide it by the sum, right, this is the sum, the sum of all of the molar masses for all of the reactants. And again, molar masses, right, it's just grams per mole. And then you times that by 100 to get a percent, right? So it's just a fraction of a part over a whole. The part being your desired product, the whole being all of the reactants that you put into that reaction. And I want to mention a couple of notes here, right, is that, I, again, like I said before, these are molar masses. These are grams per mole. These are not the actual mass of something. You don't need to actually do a reaction in order to calculate the theoret or sorry, to calculate the um, atom economy. This is just a theoretical exercise. You could, you could calculate the atom economy for any reaction you want right now in your living room. Um, don't need to go into a lab. Don't need to get an actual yield or anything like that. This is different than a percent yield where you have to do the reaction. You don't have to do the reaction for this, right? These are just molar masses, right? So you don't, know how much, you don't need to know how much you weigh out of anything. It's just add them up from the periodic table. Also for atom economy is that we do not include any reusable catalysts. So you may or may not be familiar with catalysts yet. You certainly will be um, later. But um, what we're going to see is that some things will have cat written next to them. Cat for catalyst. Or maybe it'll say like something like, if you see a percentage, like 5 mole percent or something like that, those are catalysts. And we don't include those in the atom economy because the idea is that they aren't supposed to be wasted, that they're reusable, that you can keep on using them. So we don't usually factor them into this atom economy. So we're going to ignore those when we do these calculations. The other thing to kind of point out here is that um, we are going to multiply the molar mass by a coefficient if there's one in front of it. So like, for example, and I'll show you one here in a second. But if you had something like, oh, I have iron reacting with oxygen to make iron oxide, uh, iron three oxide, right? So if you had something like this, where we, let's say we have three, two, four, the idea is that you would take the mass of iron, right, which is uh, what, 55.845, and then you'd multiply it by four because there's four of them. Same thing for here, you take the mass of O2, right, which is going to be about 32-ish, and then you multiply that by three, you take the mass of this, you'd multiply that by two, right? So if you have coefficients in your equation, you need to multiply the molar masses by that. And again, I'll show you an example of that in a second. This equation down here doesn't have any of that, so I don't really need to worry about that in this case. So here is this equation that I had in that um, previous slide, right? And what I need to do is I need to figure out what are the molar masses of these pieces. So again, my desired product here is going to be this, which is I think is what I said on the other slide. And if I look at that, the molar mass of that is 60.06 grams per mole. I also have the molar mass of my sodium bromide, which is 102.89 grams per mole. And then I have the molar mass of my reactants, which are going to be 107.96 grams per mole. And again, I got these numbers just by adding up the masses from the periodic table. And then the sodium uh, oxygen CH3 thing, sodium methoxide, is 54.02 grams per mole. And sorry, and that is a zero. Now, like we set up here in this equation, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up the molar mass of my desired product, which is the thing in green. So my molar mass of my des desired product is 60.06 grams per mole. And then I'm going to add up right all of the molar masses of my reactants, which in this case is this thing with the carbons and the bromine that weighs 107. and the thing that weighs 54.02, right? Those are my reactants. That's what I'm adding up. And then times 100. 
Now you'll notice here, right, that I did not include this thing in red. I did not include the sodium bromide because it was not my desired product and it was not my reactant, right? So that's the thing that's left over. That's the thing that's waste. And so then if you punch this into your calculator, what you should get is a number around 37.08%, right? And that is the atom economy for that reaction. That's how I figured that out on that, uh, that previous slide, right? So I took the molar, just the molar mass that I got from the periodic table, uh, of the product, I divided it by all of the reactants, multiplied it by 100 to get my percentage, right? So we're saying that 37% of the mass of the reactants ends up in the product. Now I want you to give it a try. So here's two examples. I want you to pause, take a minute, do these on your own. But I want to point out a couple things first here. Um, the first one, I was being really nice and I already calculated out the molar masses, I think, for all of these different pieces, right? So the molar mass of this is 88. Water is about 18, sulfuric acid is about uh, 98, that's about 60, that's 45. And I put in bold here the quote unquote desired product, the thing you're trying to make, right? So that's what you're trying to make in the first equation. That's what you're trying to make in the second equation here. And I want to point out, right, I said there are some caveats here that we don't include catalysts. So you don't need to worry about including catalysts. So notice that this says catalyst right here. So I can completely ignore this because it's a catalyst. We don't include catalysts in this. And we are going to need to take into account things like um, stoichiometry and coefficients. So I'm going to point that out down here that you're going to have to deal with, in the second equation, some stoichiometry. You have some coefficients here, so you're going to have to multiply up things. So go ahead and pause, take a minute, take a crack at both of these. For the second one, you're going to have to uh, not only find the molar masses, but also figure out the atom economy for this. So go ahead and pause, and then we'll go through these together. So hopefully you actually gave this a try. Let's, let's see how you did here. So I'm going to take right my desired product, which we said was 60.05 grams per mole. And I'm going to divide that by the reactants, which are just those two. Right? Remember, I'm not going to include the catalyst. We don't include catalysts. And multiply that by 100. So the atom economy for this one should be 56.5. 6% for its atom economy. So a little more than half of the mass of the reactants end up in our desired product, which is, which is fine, not great. Ideally, we're going for 100%, but that, we, we have a way to kind of measure that atom economy now. If I do the same thing for the one below, same thing, my desired product is this sucker. This, um, you should have found out, weighs about 181.45. And again, your numbers might be slightly different than mine just because you're using a different periodic table. Um, totally fine, there's a little wiggle room here. So I'm gonna use the molar mass of the C6H6, which I calculated to be um, 78.11. And now here's where the three comes in, right? Chlorine, Cl2, weighs 70.91, but there's three of them. So I'm gonna go three times that 70.91, right? This three, is this three up here. So I need to say that, well, I need to take, take into account that I needed three of them in, in, all together for my reactants. So you just include that, right? You just multiply it. Um, and then we multiply by 100. Again, I'm gonna ignore this iron chloride thing because it's a catalyst. We don't include the catalysts. And if I do that, then I get for my atom economy for this one should be about 62.39% uh, for the atom economy. And so here's how you calculate, right, the atom economies of these two things. So I could say, comparing these two reactions, right, that the second reaction is more atom economical than the first reaction. A higher percentage of the mass of the reactants end up in the product than in the first reaction. So that's how we would kind of use this to evaluate reactions. Again, the goal is more atom economical, the more, the more efficient it's supposed to be in terms of uh, atom utilization. Now, again, I'll talk more about this in other atom economy videos or about green chemistry and everything, but atom economy is just one metric. It's not the metric for um, deciding how green something is. The pros of the atom economy is that it's really quick and easy, right? We just did a couple of examples. All you need is a periodic table to do it and an equation, you're done. Um, so you don't need to actually perform the experiment. You can just do this at home. And it does give you a sense of right, how much waste there could be from a reaction. You haven't done the reaction, but it gives you a sense of like, ah, this one's definitely going to waste more atoms than this one. 
The cons, though, is that you notice that we never talk about solvents, which is like the number one source of waste for most reactions, is, is the actual solvent you do it in, whether you do a reaction in water or ethanol or acetone or THF or whatever it is. And it ignores the actual percent yield of your real reaction. Right, you may have a really highly atom economical reaction that say uses 95% of all of the atoms, you know, go to the uh, product. But if that reaction sucks and doesn't work, then who cares, right? If, if, you, if you try the reaction and only get like 5% of it actually reacts, then that's, then, then that's still a huge waste, right? That doesn't, that doesn't really, so this doesn't have a lot of real world um, uh, connection, you know, to the real, the real yields of these real reactions. You want, a, you want a reaction to have both a high, a high uh, percent yield and a high atom economy. That would be great. And then this doesn't say anything about the, the hazards of the waste, right? So, you know, you might have one reaction that has an atom economy of 90%, but that 10% might just be water or something super benign, right? Like the, the, the product is, is not a big deal. You don't really have to worry about it. But you might have another reaction that also has an atom economy of 90%. But that 10% waste might be something super toxic or super hazardous, like really flammable or explosive or, or something like that, right? So the atom economy doesn't say anything about the, the, the hazards of the waste. Is it toxic? Is it, is it going to, you know, is it corrosive? Is it going to be a, an aquatic toxin? Stuff like that. So I have a little better sense now of what atom economy is. You feel more comfortable um, calculating it. It's just, uh, you know, the molar mass of the desired product divided by the molar mass of those starting reactants. So practice. Uh, let me know if you have questions. Good luck.